Hello, I'm Mike and welcome to the workshop. So a few weeks ago my brother texted me and said he had found an old wooden plane in a shed somewhere and they were getting rid of it and would I have use for it? And I thought to myself, what use would I have for an old wooden plane? Anyway, here it is. And uh, yeah, it's, it's old, it's wooden and it's a plane and it's in surprisingly good shape. So, let's get this back to the way it should be. Roll the intro! So this guy is pretty grimy, pretty fed up, particularly when you compare this wheelwright's plane that I picked up and to be honest I've never used. But it has the one thing I need here, the handle. I'm going to copy the handle shape off this one, it feels really nice in hand. So why, when it looks this bad, did I say, yeah, I can restore this? I'll show you here now on the bench. So, as you can see, the major issue with this is that the handle is missing. And we do have woodworm holes. Now, woodworm holes means they're gone, but I will treat this. But that's just in the very, very top here. So there's no sign of woodworm really on most of the body of the plane. And particularly on the sole. The sole is really nice and solid. It's still fairly flat. There's a few jags and cuts, but we can level it out. And again here on the sides and it's had it's had a life you can see here it cracked at some stage and some industrious guys decided to screw it together but that's all part of this tool's life and it has the original although there has been some work here done to a wedge and there's still a hell of a lot of blade on this look at I mean just look at that steel so I think this is well worth restoring so if you've seen my videos before you'll know not to expect this to look like it's brand new I am a sympathetic restorer I like things to have a life but that being said this is certainly going to come closer to this than this when it's done so first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start cleaning um, get all the gunk and shit this is sitting in a shed for decades so I'll probably start just with soapy water to get everything off and probably shouldn't be touching it and then I'll treat the top here make sure all that woodworm is gone and we'll start working on the handle so, let's get started but before I did that, I wanted to remove these screws, which turned out to be pretty freaking difficult. I uh, broke or damaged one, two, and three different screwdrivers. So I made the decision to drill this out and then patch the holes. I didn't end up having to drill around to get the metal shank out, and I plugged it, but I'll show you that later. Yeah, this was a lot dirtier than I thought. This water ended up it's like I had washed a coal bucket with it. It was absolutely disgusting. But washing it gets rid of all the surface dirt and because I'm using uh, detergent here, it'll kill any mold or stuff that might be on the surface. So with it all washed, I then move on to scraping it. Obviously, it's damp, so the fibers are up, which will help me scrape away any of the rest of that gunk. And this is not a job for my beautiful, finely set cabinet scrapers. So I'm using a paint combination here, paint scrapers and just utility knife blades. 
just to get that down, get all the surface muck off, get myself down to bare timber and expose what needs to be done. And the next thing that needed to be done was to chop out where this handle was. Now, I will point out this is a specific chisel that I have for doing this kind of work because there are pins and screws in this and I don't want to damage the edge of a good chisel. Uh, this actually turned out to be surprisingly easy because the woodworm had almost exclusively attacked the handle so it wasn't really stuck anymore so that was a plus now I did have to be careful in removing it that I didn't dig into the block and I was wearing a mask because of all of this forbidden Nesquik So with the handle out and the areas that are going to be exposed, exposed, I give the body of the plane, the block, several coats of this woodworm killer and just to make sure that all the woodworm are gone. Like I said, normally when you see holes, they have vacated the premises, uh, but also it's preventative against it happening again. So I give it, I think I gave it three or four coats like this giving it plenty of time to dry in between, make sure it gets nice and soaked in there and kills off any of the wood boring insects that may be there, sorry, wood boring insects that may be there. And I did the same here where I had to bore around the screws to get out the shank, just to make sure we get good penetration. So while that was happening and that was all drying, it was time to move on to the plane blade. So anyone familiar with tool restoration, and particularly rusty old tools, knows where I'm starting, and that is with a vinegar rasp. So vinegar has an acid in it, which is known as acetic acid. That just eats away at that rust and softens it up and makes it really easy to remove. So I put it in here, I went to bed, and I came back 24 hours later, ready to start working on this blade. So, the vinegar has done this job and eaten away at that rust, made it nice and soft and easy to get off. So now, it's time to remove the rest. For that, I'm going to use my wire wheel setup here, which is just my drill with a wire reel in it. I'm going to get all this off, ready for sharpening and setting. But safety, very important. So, leather gloves, because I like my handies and goggles because I like my eyes. This is very interesting here. You can see in the light, now that I cleaned that off, you can see a defined line at the very front. That's actually the harder steel that was forge welded onto this to make the blade. Should I get the focus again? And the lighter is actually less high carbon steel that's on the top, which gives this flexibility and sharpness. So we have a lot of work still to do here, but it was kind of cool to see that, and also that now the maker's stamp here, the foundry stamp, is this one. So, that's the cap iron though. So, I'm going to show up and get back to wire wheeling.
So with everything cleaned off the wire wheel and all the edges removed, I moved on to sharpening. Now, sharpening this was a slog, and I'm glad it was. The reason it took me so long was that the steel is incredible in this blade, which means it's going to hold a super edge. So, I spent mm, roughly three, three hours, give or take, between the grinder and the stones, getting this to an absolutely perfect edge. I do have a more in-depth video, a very in-depth video actually on sharpening, which I will link up above. But I think we'll just cut now to the proof that those couple hours were well worth it. So now it's razor sharp, but it's still but ugly. So let's tape off those sharp edges, start sanding this baby down and making it look absolutely gorgeous. The sole of the plane needs to be perfectly flat to work optimally. So what you can see I'm doing here is I've marked all the way along the width here with a pencil and that will allow me to see where I have and haven't removed material. Do you need a plane to fix a wooden plane? No. You could do what I'm doing here just with some sandpaper on a flat surface like a piece of marble or a countertop. The key here is to do what you see me do in a moment. Check that you're staying square, flat, and in a line. And with a bit of patience, you should end up with a perfectly flat square sole on your plane, which means you're going to get the best results in terms of the thinness of shavings and straightness of edges.
cameras only record uh, when they're turned on. Who knew? Uh, so, what you missed here was the fitting of those plugs that I cut. You can see, beautiful tight. They're not the same colour. This is a very, very old piece of peach. And even though the piece of peach I had was quite old, the colour is just not matching. Well, unfortunately, that's what you missed. And, um, yeah. We're almost done with this. I just need to do a bit of cleaning up here in the mouth. And then it's time to make a new handle. I don't think this is the original wedge. So I put this wedge in here. You can see when I shove it in, there's quite a lot of a gap sticking out. If I compare it to this other wooden plane that I have, which has the original wedge, the wedge is the full width and absolutely perfectly smooth inside. So what we're going to have to do is adjust this wedge so that it is right. It's quite a bit not wide enough. It's quite a bit not wide enough. It's quite a bit shorter. So I'm going to plane these faces down and put on a bit of a beach veneer and then we'll shape and fit this. So what I'm using here to whiten out my wedge is some construction veneer. It's a little bit over two mil thick, um, which is handy because we're just in around four or five mil too loose here. So when you're cutting veneer in general and you know, construction veneer in particular, the key to getting the best result is a nice sharp blade. I like to use a scalpel and just take it in many light passes, not leaning too heavy. If you lean too heavy, you go into the grain, you'll chip it out. And more importantly, you might actually break the tip off your blade. Um, trust me, patience pays off with this kind of stuff. With the wedge good to go, it's time to start preparing for putting in the new handle. So I'm just sanding off the filler 
that I have here just to fill all those woodworm holes make it look a bit nicer and I selected a nice piece of walnut for this because the contrast looks oh so good When I have something like this to do where I have a carved end on a tenon or something like this, the method I use for getting that is to find the drill bit that is the same diameter of the round that I'm trying to match and then just drilling a small pilot, only about a mil deep with that drill bit in the end grain. This then gives me a shelf to work down towards to help me get a perfect fit and this did turn out really really tight.
So, body is repaired, our wedge is repaired, new handle. This is almost ready for the finishing stage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply several coats of linseed oil to help rehydrate this because it's been, you know, mistreated. And then over the body, we're going to give it a couple of coats of Danish oil, get that nice, smooth, shiny, hard lacquer effect. It's not a lacquer, but you know what I mean, that hard finish. And then on the base, I'm going to put a couple of coats of wax, beeswax, polish this up so it's I'm not going to lie, once I opened up this jar and got that familiar scent of wax, I uh, I got rid of any thoughts of applying Danish oil because I want this to smell this good and to feel this good every time I use it. So wax goes on all of this and it looks really smooth. So when you're applying a wax like this, this is a base wax, uh, you need to apply what I call the Mr. Miyagi principle. Wax on wax off if you leave it too long it's going to be almost impossible to polish that wax away so almost as soon as I have it worked in I buff it all back off to get that lovely shiny finish And now comes the moment we've all been waiting for. I know I have. Setting this up and testing it. Now, setting up and adjusting a wooden plane is quite different than a metal plane. So, how you control the depth of your cut, if you want to go deeper, you're going to tap on the iron to drive the iron down. And then to draw it back, you tap on the front or back of the plane. Now, I know this is physics, but as far as I'm concerned, this might as well be magic. How just tapping the front of this can drive the blade back. I don't know how it works, but I do love it. So I take a bit of time here just to get the blade in where I want it. And I'm eyeing down the sole to make sure everything is nice and square. And then we'll start testing. It is hard to describe how good this feels, how well it slides, how well it cuts. This is the moment I fell in love with this plane. And then I wanted to see how far I could push this. So I very carefully tap, 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 adjusted this until it was just barely biting. And you can see here, when I put it on the calipers, the shaving is 0 0.08 of a millimeter, which, as far as I'm concerned, that'll do, pig. That'll do. Let's give it a bit more challenge, shall we? So, next inch mahogany. <coughs> Let's increase the depth of the cut. So smooth. 
final test here was a piece of wavy grain ash that was the exact width of the blade and yeah this dealt with it better than my metal plane because I had to try both. So that's the end of this week's video and um, I just I love this you're going to be seeing this in probably all of my videos from now on it came out so well and it's just it's hard to describe when you use a tool that works really well it just gives you such a feeling um, other people who work with their hands and work with tools probably know that feeling this is amazing I mean look at all this look at all this just, just for fun just for fun I cut it because that's how much I love this so thank you as always for staying to the end of this video make sure you like share subscribe and absolutely do try this at home just because it's a wooden plane doesn't mean it's still not an amazing tool